Are we live? We're good. Okay. Hi, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here. We are on our Sew Together Tuesday tour on the road. And we are here at Blue Bar Quilts in Middleton, Wisconsin. So I am super excited to be here today. We are, uh, we have, this is our fourth, fourth week on the road. We've been done a whole bunch of uh, classes along the way. And we have done a little loop to loop. If you've been following our tour at all on the Shannon Fabrics blog, you can see on the map, you can find it. And it's a little bit, what did, what did somebody say? Oh, that it, we were drunk, drunk. when we planned it. Drunk. <laughs> it's a little crazy. <laughs> we've done this whole thing around the Midwest now. And now we're like back down into, are we in the South? South Central, South, South Central Wisconsin. So come on in, Gail. So Gail is the uh, owner of Blue Bar Quilts. And I heard you talking this morning because we did a little news thing this morning. Yeah. So where can they see the news thing? Because that was pretty fun. Yeah, it was they Channel see it on... 3000, um, a local network, and we did an early morning. Early. Like we really were very early. game yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> but then we went and napped, so it was fine. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. But they can see it on your on your website. Can they yeah, see it? Yeah, there are links in my social okay. media feeds on Facebook and Instagram. There are okay. links in the comments, and it's um, on, the link is on my homepage, awesome. com. Yeah, so you have to go check it out because that was pretty yeah, fun. We to had do. fun. <laughs> that we was, did have fun. That was fun, and you got him to do some sashiko. Yeah, and we talked yeah. about cuddle and how great it is. And all yeah, that we got the anchor yeah. to uh, do some rotary cutting and some sashiko embroidery, so that was kind of fun. So it was a fun morning here. Yeah. So we're here. You have been in business for how long? A little over four years. And it was four years in April. Okay. And did you start the business or you bought the business? Started the business. Started from the business. Scratch. Very nice. And so what made you start a quilt shop? Um, I had been long arm quilting in my basement and I have the whole time I was doing that, I mm -hmm. was trying to get out of my basement and socialize. So God. I thought, I yeah. And I had friends encouraging me, friends in the quilting community here. And our great local shop that had been in business for over 30 years closed. Oh, and that got it. Instigated so there was a hole and you needed mm -hmm. to fill it. Yeah, thanks. Exactly. It's funny, I always used to say I was a closet sewer because I didn't know anybody else who sewed. It's oh, no, just we, like I sewed we by have myself. A big, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of funny, you were, you were a basement long armor. Uh, basement long armor, <laughs> but a lot of people in the community, a lot of quilting friends and That's sewing awesome. friends that all said, you know what, you should do this, which I usually don't go for. But, <laughs> but you did. <laughs> did. And it's been okay so far. So far, so good. So Gail has a uh, so small selection of cuddle here. She's got some of the, um, you've got a couple of the, the wide backs because mm -hmm. quilting with cuddle is kind of amazing. So yeah. there's that. So it she's is. got that. But we also did a custom uh, lullaby kit that we're going to be putting together today. So the, the kit is the one that's here and it's available only through bluebarquilts.com. Mm -hmm. Is that your website, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want this kit, she's the one who kitted it up. So you can get it from her. And uh, we also had some fun yesterday looking through other like combinations. Yes, yes. So that's kind of where I want to take this today is that this is a great kit to start with, but you can also put together your own sort of thing. So anything um, that you want to tell them about what sets your, what sets your shop apart? Well, we definitely different? have a modern aesthetic mm -hmm. and my Yeah, goal... lots of bright colors. <laughs> lots yeah. of bright colors, lots of great basics. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is something for everybody here. I do carry a great really nice color wall mm -hmm. and I have sure. solids and great blender lines mm -hmm. that work for almost anybody. Um, but my goal was to make sure it was appealing to the younger set so that my business had a longer life. Right. <laughs> and I'm also finding that um, quilters that are more in our age range mm -hmm. still enjoy the selection totally. because now they're making things for their younger family members yep. and kids and grandkids and yeah. this is what the kids and friends have fun. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I was I was super impressed. I came through a couple of years ago when I was teaching in the area and I came through and my friend Sam from Hunter's Design Studio. Yep. She told me you have yep. to stop. And so I did. Sam's and I was like, buddy, yeah. this place is great. Hi, Sam. So, <laughs> so I'm back and I'm super excited to be here. So this is our hundredth episode. Thanks great. for hosting us. Yeah. I'm very excited and let's make a cuddle quilt. Okay. Cool. Great. All right. So the quilt project that we're doing today is a Strip quilt is what it is. It's the lullaby. So the lullaby is this size of quilt. And so what it features is a big main piece, a contrast, and then like a band at the bottom. And then you can do an applique. So the pattern, if you want to get the pattern, it's available on shannonfabrics.com if you go down to the pattern. It's also available on our blog. So if you go to the, down, just scroll down to the bottom, there's a thing for the blog and you can click on that and there will be a link to download the pattern that is specifically using these fabrics, okay? So if you get the kit, I think you get the pattern too. If you don't buy the kit, you still have the pattern. You can you can make it. Okay, 
this, the way that we put this together is the way that we're going to put together any kind of strip quilt that we have. So we're kind of excited about that. Before I get into it, though, don't forget that you need to share, 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 share. Um, and at the end, we'll announce a winner for a free kit. So maybe we'll give away a lullaby kit at the end of this. Um, so make sure that you share the video, tell your friends, tell your sewing friends, all that good stuff about it. And uh, I think I think we're good. Is that right, Hawk? I think we've, I we've checked off most of the boxes. <laughs> it's so hard to keep track of everything, every time. All right, so this is the kit, or this is the quilt um, pattern that we have, okay? So this is it, nice little pattern, shows you how to put it together. Oh, I put it upside down, sorry. <laughs> um, so it shows you how to do the two variations. So we have the one that has the little applique and then one that has the strips. Okay, so you can do it either way. You're gonna basically use the same thing and they'll have the cutting instructions in there for you. All right, throw that on the floor for you, the ground. Um, okay, so let me get started. So the first thing we wanna do is when wherever we're working with quilts as you go, we're gonna start with the backing. So we wanna do the backing and put the batting onto it. You do not have to do batting. It does make it easier. So if you have not worked with a cuddle quilt kit before or just sewn a strip, strip quilt in cuddle before, one of the things that, that we do is we put this batting on there and it will help make it a little bit more stable. So when you're working with it, it's going to be less floppy. So cuddle is a knit fabric and it's microfiber plush. So it's kind of has a little bit of movement to it. Once you learn how to work with it, it's much easier. But if you're just beginning, I really suggest that you use the batting as a stabilizer. So we're going to show how to do that. All right. So let me get my stuff. So I want to start a big pile of stuff here. I want to show you guys all sorts of things. All right. So here's my batting. And I am using uh, Quilter's Dream Poly for that. And I have my backing, which I have way more than I need, and that's okay because I'm going to show you why. Okay, so I've got backing and batting, and I'm going to put these two together. So the way that I like to do it is I will put my, let me do this in a different order. I just want to show you what I have. So this is the Lux Cuddle Watermelon, Lux Cuddle High Watermelon, sorry. Okay, so it's a new color that we have. It's really, really beautiful, and it goes super well with this um, little uh, water or the watermelon rainbows that we have. So let me see if I can get this laid out on my mat so that I can do some spray basting because that's the way to make it stick together the easiest way. And I've definitely used this before. <laughs> I always talk about the 505 spray that I like it so much because you can use it and then wash it and then use it some more, but I didn't, um, I just used this one. So it just has sticky on it and it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna lay my batting down. And like I said, you're gonna do this with any style of the strip quilt. Okay, I'm try to get, make sure I've got things covered. I don't wanna get it in my, on my mat if I can avoid it. If you do get it on your mat, you can just wash it off with um, warm soapy water and it will totally come off. Not, not alcohol. Not alcohol, <laughs> no. That's a bad, that's a bad scene. Yeah, yeah. The, don't, the, the yeah. lines might come right. The lines off. come come off sometimes. That happened to us. That was bad. That was bad. It was like right before. It one seemed of the like shows such a good too. idea. At the, and the I was time. like, "Yeah, got stuff on there. Let's clean it off." Not the way to do it. This is what happens when you get a painter who thinks he knows something about chemicals <laughs> in the game. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to. I'm gonna have to cut some of this off because there's too much. Too much. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna spray the back of this and I'm gonna put this down. Okay, I've got not enough room to do what I want to, so I'm gonna spray just a little bit here. So this is a 505 spray. Um, can you see that? The little webbing on there? So that's how much we want on there. We don't want any spots that show like wetness. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this up. And I'm gonna pat it into place. Turn this just a little bit actually before I pat it because I realize it's a little crooked. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up, get it back flat, and pat it into position. Okay. There we go. That's confusing because there's like a little lump in there. And I'm like, is my batting lump in there? No. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this whole thing around. 
so that I can keep rolling it up and away from me. So that's really important is that when I'm putting this on, I want it to roll that way so I can kind of push it up and pat it down. So I'm gonna pull this back, spray the back of it again. I don't wanna get any on the front of it because it'll just make it sticky. Okay. Roll that out again. Pat it in place. Do the same. Do it again. To make sure it's stuck on there nicely. I need to figure out oops, how uh, how long I need this to be. So I didn't cut it off. I just pulled it right out of my bag, and that was it. Now I'm like, wait, that's longer than I need. So maybe we'll talk about cutting the fabric too. <laughs> now that I'm here, I'm like, oh shoot, I've got too much. Okay, all right, almost there. Okay, and like I said, this is the Quilter's Dream Poly batting is what this is. All right, can we get it to the end of my batting? And if it doesn't stick where you want it to, you just pull it back up, put it back down, okay? So now that I've got to the end of my batting, I'm just gonna take that off. So I'm gonna guess that I measured that right when I left town five weeks ago, four weeks ago. <laughs> so you never know. I could be totally wrong. Um, <laughs> we could get to the end of the quilt and be like, um, that didn't work, but hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, so let me show you how I cut the back of this stuff. So I always do this with my batting side down and then like this, if I have to, if I have to fix it, I can. And I find that much easier than trying to put the fabric down and smooth the batting over, yeah, smooth the batting over the fabric. I like to smooth the fabric over the batting. All right, okay, I'm going to just draw a little line right along here. It's not very straight at all, but it's okay. Because I just need to whack it off. I will straighten it up later. So this is the little tool I'm gonna use to uh, cut my fabric. Okay, at the Ulta SAC-1, it's a little blade. We'll see how sharp this baby is. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag this right along the back of my fabric. And as I do that, it'll cut it and not make such a big mess because it won't be cutting all of the fibers underneath. So I'll be able to cut this and not make a huge mess all over. The other pieces are hopefully cut to size. There's a lot of classes we had to prep for. <laughs> okay. There was a time when Sew Together Tuesday was like the wild, wild west where we were figuring out the show basically the day before. <laughs> the morning uh, of. <laughs> the morning of sometimes. And then all of a sudden, oh, you're going on tour. You have to know what all the classes are for the next three months. <laughs> right. Which has been a little bit harder. So, yeah, definitely trying to plan for it long term is a little harder. All right. So now I've got my backing and my batting. So now they're just going to work as one piece. So as I'm putting them together, I'm going to give this a little bit of a shake so I can see some stuff floating. Um, but it's very little. Uh, so now I'm going to work with these together as one piece. If you don't want to use the batting, this you would totally skip that step. Like I said, if it's your first one, I recommend that you use it just because it does make it easier. So the next thing I want to do is I want to try to figure out which way my nap goes so I can pet it from top to bottom. So this is my selvage edge. Okay, I can see that. So the nap is going to run along the selvage. This is the length of the fabric. So it's going to run this way, this way. I'm going to see which way feels better. I think this is top to bottom. So I'm going to put T up here at the top, just to remind myself that it's my no, no, to remind myself that this is the top. <laughs> Kidding. Um, <laughs> so this is the top of the quilt for me. Okay. So this one starts, it has a big piece up top. You don't have to quilt the whole thing. You can, you can, if you don't use any batting, you don't have to quilt it at all. But we're going to use that big piece and then we'll quilt it later if we want to. We are because it will be used by somebody at some point. Okay, so the next piece I have is a big hunk that is this piece, right? So this one, come in and show this guy because it's super cute. So this is a fairly new fabric that we have and it is called After the Rain. It's this cute little rainbow with a little heart and stars. There's a couple of variations. So there's a blue one that's like navy and bluebell and some other cute colors. So 
Check them out. This one works really well with the Lux Cuddle Hide. Obviously, this one, I know which one is top and bottom because it's a rainbow. It's pretty easy to tell which one is the top, so I don't have to pet that one. If it was not a print that was a directional print, I would need to pet that too and make sure that the nap goes in the same direction. So I'm going to show you one little trick for that. Is I'm going to put this on here. A lot of times when people are trying to figure out what the nap is, they'll do it like this and fold it down and try to pet it like this. But that flips your nap because now this nap is wrong, okay? So this is my top, and I always want to pet it this direction. So I'm going to turn it this way, and I'll pet it this. So, so I'll get both of these going so, um, down the length of the quilt, okay? So this is how I would tell. Like I said, this is directional, so I obviously know that this is the top of it. But if I couldn't tell, that's exactly how I would do it, all right? So I'm going to go ahead, get my pins out of the way. And now I'm going to spray baste this guy on. So I'm going to kind of even this evenly distribute this on here. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this back. And I'm going to spray this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some, uh, this is just some wax paper that I have from home that I'm going to put underneath this so that I don't spray all over the front of my fabric. Let's see if we can... Get that under there. I'm going to tick it up just a little bit so it doesn't get them on the sheet either. Okay. All right. So then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to spray this. So again, it's the same thing where you're just spraying a little bit. You're getting a light webbing over it and you're going to push it back and get it down into place. All right. Like I said, if you get any wet spots, it means you're spraying too close or too hard. So make sure that you back it up and spray just a light coating on it. Okay. And this is the OD. 505 spray. So it's the one I like the best because, as Hawk will tell you, it doesn't smell. I can't smell it at all, and I'm right here in the room. No, it doesn't smell. It's great stuff. So if you used basting spray before and absolutely hated it, I will tell you, you should probably try the 505 because it's much better. Was that um, wax paper or parchment paper? It's wax. That's what I have is wax paper. You can use parchment paper. You can use scrap newsprint. You could use whatever you've got that just can be sprayed on and thrown away. That's all it is. Okay, it's just extra paper. Um, I've been known to use eight and a half by 11 pages. <laughs> I've gone across because it's scrap paper, it's fine. Doesn't matter, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it around, I'm gonna do the other side. So like I said, I always like to lay it out this direction. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, get that nice and flat. Okay, and then I'm gonna spray this again. Shoot, have to cover this up over here, hold up. Don't want to spray based. Anything, I don't have to. Okay. Roll this up again, and I just push it out with my hands. And you can see I kind of push from the center out and get it to lay down. Okay, and then we'll pat it in position. Okay, and it's going to stick. So now, if this is all stuck together as one, if we want to quilt this later, we can. We can quilt around any motif that we want to. All right. So one more little edge here. So again, I'm going to use my paper to stick it underneath the edge. And all this is doing is protecting that right side here that I don't want to get the spray on. And I just pull it back until it stops. I'm like, okay, that's where I can do it. I'm going to spray that on there. And I'll just swing that back up. Okay. All right. There we go. All right, so as you might note, these are not the same size, okay? So my backing, my batting, my front, they're all different sizes. It's fine. If you get a kit, they're probably cut more carefully than I, can, I cut them. But if this is how I do it. It's fine because at the end, we'll just trim it up, okay? So generally speaking, this is cut with the fabric. So our fabrics are all, um, the, all the cuddle and Lux cuddles are 60 inches wide. So we're going to cut that in half, so it's about 30 inches. We're going to trim it up at the end so that it's nice and rectangular, but it doesn't actually matter what the size is too much. So if there's some variation, it's okay. We'll be all right. Okay, so now we've got the top part of it on, and we're going to put the next strip on. So finally, we're going to start sewing.
Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Browser crash. <laughs> All right. I think we're back. Okay. Yep. See if we can get some thumbs up for some <laughs> some good audio that it, that's back too, because that likes to go away on us sometimes as well. Okay. All right. So the next step after I've got this the top part on, I'm going to put the next the band on, which is a little I think it's three inches. Yeah, it's a little three inch strip. So really, this is just um, decorative and sort of cute. Uh, this is what makes it fun to put these together in any sort of kit that you want to do. So to personalize your kit is that you get to pick the fabrics. I really like this one. This one is Lux Cuddle Chenille, and I love it because it kind of looks like it was knitted, which is fun. So I really like it for binding, but today we're using it for this little band. Okay, so I'm going to take this. So you can see it kind of looks like it's knitted. It's really fun. So I like to lay it in position. This is where it's going to be. So when it's sewn down, it's going to look like this. So what I'm going to do is put it in place. My nap is going to go this direction for both of them. Then I'm going to flip it over right sides together. Okay, I'm going to lay them together. Make sure that the edges match for the most part. And then I'm going to pin it. So I'm using my little clover pins. So these are the ones that come in the box. And these are my favorite ones. They are really nice and strong. So I'll show you. I have a couple of different kinds. So these are the kind that come on the card. And these are a little bit bendier. Okay. So this is the one that comes in the box. And it doesn't bend at all. So these are my favorite when putting the cuddle quilts get together because there's so much thickness. So I'm working through one, two, three layers of cuddle plus the batting. So these won't bend at all. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin an end, get it nice and even. And I'll come over and I'll pin the other end. I'm going to put my pin away. And I'll just lay this out so that it's nice and flat. So I'm not going to pull this and get it to match or worry about trying to match it perfectly. I'm just going to lay it out nice and smooth along the way and sort of just lay it down. And then I'm going to pin this end. And then I'll pin the middle and then keep like subdividing it, I guess, until I have kind of covered everything and held that whole row down in place. So this is what we call double pinning. I'll show you why in just a second. But we always pin parallel to the raw edge, especially when we're doing a uh, strip quilt. It really does help to be able to keep the fabric in the position we want it to be. So I'm just going to pin in between. Okay, and I'm pinning about a quarter inch from that edge. And I'm going to come and in between where we have these little gaps where the fabric can still move, I'm going to pin up here so that it can no longer move. All right, and that's what helps there. So now, so you can see this will move, but once I pin it, there's no way for it to keep moving on me. Okay, so now it's not going to move anywhere. And that's the whole purpose is to keep the fabrics in position as we're sewing it. All right, this quilt is super easy because literally we have two seams across. Okay, and we'll do a little applique and I'll show you how to do that. So like I said, we're going to pin about a quarter of an inch. The next one is about a quarter of an inch or half inch away. I like to pin so that I can leave these pins in. Sometimes I get a little bit off and I'll have to take them out or I'll sew and sew over them, which you don't want to do. So try to always, always avoid sewing over the metal part. If you sew over the plastic part, it's not as terrible. But the, uh, the metal part is really, really bad for your machine. Hey, Teresa, who yeah. are here? we're here at Blue Bar. We are at Blue Bar. And check it out. Oh, yeah. There's a classroom full of folks, mm -hmm. live and in person. And, and, and you <laughs> and, might recognize and this woman right here. Anybody on YouTube? <laughs> That's Miss Jackie Hillman. <laughs> That's who answers your questions. <laughs> We're very glad she's here with us. So I've got my machine. I'm going to bump this up to a 3.5 stitch length, just a straight stitch. We want to use polyester thread and a straight or a stretch needle. So if you did not watch our, um, the video from last week when we were at Red Roxy, that was just last week, wasn't it? It was a year ago. It was a least. year ago, but also last week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when we were at Red Roxy, we did the um, 10 tips for sewing with cuddle and we talked about the polyester thread versus cotton thread and it's a question I get a lot is do you have to use polyester thread and if you watch that video you'll see how um, the cotton thread just popped and um, the polyester thread will work very very well so polyester thread we're using Mettler Mettler's Metrocene and just a medium gray and I use that for everything oh, 
I just said that, and you know what? My bobbin is so low. I'm probably going to have to just do it. We'll see. Okay. Bob and chicken? Yeah, we're playing Bob and chicken today. All right, Bob and chicken it is. Right. <laughs> it's so weird to put this in here. And I'm just going to do a little stitch and then a back stitch. Okay, I'm going to make sure and take my pins out. And I'm just going to sew right along this edge with about a half an inch seam allowance. Okay. So as I go, I'm going to work this through. And I'm almost always, I pull, not pull, but I hold my fabric in the back. Because it will want to get sort of, um, I don't know, doesn't always work through as nicely as you want it to because it's so thick. So we just kind of keep a hand back here and help feed it through just a little bit. All right, make sure I'm missing my pins. All right, we'll get this to work through. The other thing that I'm doing, you'll notice, is that all of this fabric here is up on my table. And that's because one, I'm standing, but two, even if I were sitting, all of that fabric pulling this direction makes it harder for the needle to work. Okay, and you have a lot more chance of breaking your needle because it's being pulled backward from the weight of the fabric. Okay, so we're just gonna sew all the way along here, straight stitch, 3.5 millimeter st stitch length. There's a little something somebody noticed. You actually do a little bit of a roll over here a little I did a little I did do it action exactly just to keep this out of the way so it doesn't bite here because mm -hmm. even though I have a nice big throat on this it's not big enough to put the whole thing over there yeah absolutely that's a great way to do it is just kind of roll it up burrito action there okay. just work our way through half inch pretty much what we do for almost everything is a half inch seam allowance and the reason we do that is because uh, the fabric it sometimes has a mind of its own, like most of the time it has a mind of its own. So we have to learn to control it, um, and we can't always. So if I feel like it's going to move on me at all, if it has that chance, I try to give it a half inch seam allowance just so it has a little extra wiggle room. But if it does move, I'm not in trouble because nobody wants to go back and fix those seams. Yeah, and especially on these strip quilts, I have seen people do very small seam allowances. We'll, we'll show again how big this seam allowance is when we're done. I've seen people try to do very small ones and what ends up happening is you don't catch the bottom fabric and then you have to go back in and restitch it again, which is fine. And on most projects that works just, just fine. But on this one, it, because it's quilt as you go, it's stitching to the back so you can see all those, the restitching, which is not as fun. So pull this out. I got all my pins, almost all my pins out. Okay. so. There we go. So you can see how big this seam allowance is here and how not perfectly straight it is, but it's okay. okay. So about a half an inch seam allowance, make sure that it's all caught. I can look underneath. I can see the other fabric the whole way across on this back side. So I'll point out my little, my little goof here, right? So we got a little small and crooked here. So then we'll turn it over here and I'll show you how perfect it is. Okay. <laughs> so now it looks absolutely perfect. If I come in here with my little stiletto and I fluff that all up, no one will ever be the wiser. Okay? So don't worry about if you get little little goofs, but you definitely want to make sure you have a big enough seam allowance. All right. So next step is to stick that one down. So we call this stitch and flip, and that's what we're doing is we're going to stitch, and then we're going to flip it. So I'm going to put this down because I don't want to spray my cute little rainbows. Put that there. Okay, I've got some on my board. I'm gonna have to clean it up later. And I'm just gonna flip this over. Okay, so what I wanna do here is make sure that this is pulled nice and flat so that this seam will come over. Because this is a knit fabric, because it's knit, it wants to kind of curl right here. So I kind of have to give it a little bit of a tug and put it down. Okay, so if it's sticking a little more than I want it to, I can just unstick, pull, okay, and get it nice and flat. If I don't do that, I end up getting too much fabric up here compared to how much fabric is on the back. You'll get a little mole hill, basically. All right, then we're going to put the next strip on, which is this guy. Okay, so now you have a choice. You can put your applique on and then put it onto your quilt, or you can put it onto your quilt and then do your applique. That's the way I choose to do it, the second way. So I'll put this on and then do my applique, but you can do it either way, depending on what you prefer. Okay, so I'm going to 
figure out what my nap is. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, and I can kind of tell because in these big swoopy areas where it's a little bit like flatter, that makes a bigger difference in which way it goes. With and I the can kind of feel it. If, if, if you can't tell, nobody doesn't else matter. can tell either. Yeah, <laughs> so. doesn't matter. Eh. Right, exactly. So if you can't tell, leave it the way it is. Okay, don't worry about it too much. The other way that you can tell is how much nap comes off the end over here when I cut it with a blade. With the hide, it's a, it's a little bit more over there, but it still comes off quite a bit up here because the nap does this swoopy thing. All right. Okay, so I'm going to lay it down exactly where I want it to be. So if this were finished, it would look like this. Okay. So I want to put it here. So what I'm going to do is lay it down there, right sides to, or right side up, and then flip it so that it's in position and we'll pin it again. Okay. So I'm going to come back over. Throw some pins on the floor. It's always a good start. And then we'll come over here and I'll start pinning again. Again, one end and then the other end, just making sure that it's flat. Pin it here, pin it in between, and just keep going. Okay, so you're going to pin the whole edge and you're going to do this. The same technique works no matter which kind of quilt you're doing. So if you're doing a big quilt, it's going to be just like this. If you're doing a small quilt, strip quilt, it's going to be like this. Okay. So we're going to pin this all the way across. And then we'll go sew it one more time. Later, Dad. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> was your dad here? <laughs> yeah, he was on the stream for a minute. <laughs> He looks like he's got to get back to work like a lot of folks do. Yeah, totally true. All right, so now we're just going to sew this one more time. All right, so we'll come over here. I'm actually going to stay back here and watch that left hand action for a minute. Okay, that, so okay. I am just going to stick it through here, right sides together, get it nice and even in there. My whole big main part is over here. All right, try to get this in there. Get my foot positioned properly. All right, and then we'll do it one more time. So we just backstitch, go forward. Okay. So once I've got it, so with the digital dual feed, which is I use the, um, it's a baby lock crescendo. So the digital dual feed is what I use as a walking foot. So you always want to try to use a walking foot. It'll make it much easier, especially with this many layers. Um, I do have to try to get it past that before I can really grab it. So if you've got the same sort of machine, or any of them that have these big, the big digital dual feed. You know what I'm talking about. And try to get it laid out nice and even. And I try to leave those pins in for as long as I can without sewing over them. Okay, so we definitely don't want to sew them. I hit our needle on it, that will break a needle. And that's no fun at all. All right. You could see here where I had where I had cut it before. I had done the same thing that I showed at the beginning where I marked it with a black Sharpie, cut it, and did it with the, uh, the blade, which is why I have all that fuzz hanging out the side. Well, that one I was able to miss. I was pinning a little close today. Took out so many of my pins. <coughs> All right. So as we're going here, we're just going to keep making sure that it's fairly even. I also try to keep this kind of a little bit of tension on the front just to make sure that it's sewing through nicely. All right. Get over here, get all the way to the edge, do a little back stitch. It's not super important to back stitch on this because we're going to trim the edge anyway, but it's just kind of a good habit to be in. All right. So now, same thing. Check all my seams, make sure it's caught, everything on both layers, which it has. So if it hadn't, if like, cause this is a, it's only sort of close, but it's not quite a half an inch. And if it gets too close, you kind of just have to um, check it and um, make sure that it won't pull out at all. Usually you can get it done like a quarter of an inch. It's totally fine. 
not going to be any issue. Because it's a knit fabric, it isn't going to fray and come out, which is the issue that we would have with Zor cotton. If it got too narrow, it would just pull out. But because it is it's a knit fabric, it's going to be totally fine. All right, so one more. Let me get my little parchment paper one more time. Do the same thing. So we've stitched it, and now we're going to flip it. Okay, so I'll show you. If I flip it like this, you can see like it has a whole lot of roll here. That's what we're trying to combat by using this uh, basting spray. Okay. <clears throat> can you put it back and I'll get a little closer again? Yeah. Just show that. So if I just flip it over, that's what it wants to do, is this whole fluff thing here, Got which it. isn't, yeah, not attractive. Not attractive. So we're going to lean this back. I'll spray the back of it, push it up again. See if I can keep my computer from being spray baked in. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of push it up. Okay, so you can see how much flatter that is with the spray baked in. Okay, even me just, just pushing it up as I went and not like stretching it, it gets it really nice and flat. Okay, and that's what we want. All right, you ready for the uh, the applique? Yeah, let's play. Do it. Okay, so the applique, you just got to figure out where you want to put the applique, and you also got to figure out what you want to do with the applique. So the applique could be anything. Um, with this one, we're just going to use a motif from the fabric itself. So I took, so here's a piece of the fabric. So normally when you get a kit, you'll get extra hunk of fabric. So I just bought an extra hunk of fabric is what I did. And I want to use my uh, that for my applique. So you need an eight inch circle. So what I did is I got some of this fun little template plastic. Okay, It's heat resistant. You don't need it to be heat resistant, but that's what they had. So I got it. And it's clear, which is the cool part for me because I can see what my motif is. If I use an eight inch circle, I have no idea what I'm cutting out. Uh, or an eight inch plate, I don't know what I'm cutting out. So if I have this, I can see it, which is great. Okay. So I want to do it there. I'm gonna see if I can cut this. I wish I had, I don't have any magnets or something heavy. Huh. I know. How do we not have any magnets with this right know. now? I don't know. Fascinating. Bad, bad luck. But I'm just going to trace around this with my my rotary cutter and just hold this in place. Okay, because what I would normally want to do is trace around this with a big black pen. But if I do that, I'm also going to have a big black edge around my applique, which is not as cute. So I'm going to try to cut a nice circle. So the other thing you could do is if you weren't wanting to be quite so precise is you could do it from the back. Um, you could also use a like the friction marker probably, and um, use a heat erase with that or a water soluble. Yeah, that seems like a bold move, what you just did there. It's kind of bold, yeah. brave, crazy, yeah. yeah, all those things. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked, it worked just fine. Yes. So I was gonna show, I used this little tool, which is pretty cool, the circle cutter. So this is from Ulfa, and basically it works is that this is, um, this is the rotary blade over here, which I'm not gonna touch, but that's the rotary blade, you could pop it out, like this, the blade pops out. We're gonna keep that hidden. This part sits in the middle and then draws the circle. So it worked kind of like this. Okay, you draw a circle. And that's how I got this template. Okay, because whether you get the kit or you get your own, you make your own, it does not come with a circle template. So you have to make your own. The first time I did try to use a plate and then it was very frustrating because it was not actually like centered in there. So this way I can center it pretty well, cut it with the rotary cutter. Just a little bleep later. <laughs> um, <laughs> get rid of some of that cuddle dust. All right, so let me put it back back Because that little pointy part right there is super sharp. All right, so now I've got my little circle, my cute little rainbow. Now I get to decide where I want to put it. So I can put it over here, put it over here, put it in the center. Whatever you want to do. If you have an embroidery machine, you could totally embroidery, embroider something on here and then applique it on. Super cute, do what you will, but it makes it very, very easy to do. So we did it on this side on the other one, so let's do it over here. 
That sounds like fun, right? Symmetry is overrated. That's right. Okay, so I'll know which one I did wear. Uh, all right, so now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to spray base the back of it. And put it in position. So for me, this is the easiest way. If you are doing a applique that is a little bit funky or shaped, you could um, you can put SF 101 on the back of it and then cut out your circle, and it will help keep its shape a little bit better too. Just FYI. Okay, does that look like it's? I like really? it. We're gonna lose a little bit down at the bottom, right? When you uh, when you bind it, just the tiniest or little you bit. Square it up. Yep, when we square it up. So we have I to just kind be... of pretend we understand that yep. versus that. And yep. we're not going to get too picky about nope. measuring because that's a bad idea. If you wanted to get really picky, you could straighten this up and then place the measure carefully. But I, it's not how I roll at all. Yeah, I am all about making it easier. Teresa, <laughs> Teresa's easier. intuition. <laughs> easier and faster. Okay, let me get rid of my pins again. So now we're going to stitch it down. And that's it. Easy peasy. So I recommend using a zigzag stitch or a serp no, not a serpentine stitch, or blanket stitch. I don't remember what it was called for a second there. Let's see if we can do that. See if I can find it on here. Somebody's going to tell me how to do it because I know that they have before. Okay, so I want to do this. I want to do it a little bit wider. Do it just a little bit longer. So what? What are those? So what are those numbers? We're at a three width, a three length. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, three width, three length, and I'm just actually going to do it right on my little scrap here. I'm going to give it a little shake so I don't take all this cuddle dust in my machine. Okay. Just leave it for Gail. Sorry. You will not. <laughs> so you, we won't, I promise. All right. So I just want to see how this is going to work, how it will actually stitch. Okay, so that's too long. I don't like the length. So I'm going to shorten it to two. 1.8. Let's see what we got. Okay, now we can take it out. So I always, I always um, suggest that you try it first, okay, and see how it goes. So here's my little stitches. Here's my little blanket stitch comes out here, 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 here. I like that better than this big spread. Okay, you can't really see it very well because it sinks right into the fabric. Let me show you. So here's here's a stitch over, here's a stitch over, and then I made it smaller, like stitches like that. Okay, so I like that better. But look how it just disappeared in there. I'm not sure it's going to be worth it, man. I'm just kidding. It'll be, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be beautiful. I do not suggest doing a straight stitch, though, because a straight stitch is really hard to maintain the perfect width for it. So you want to get it, um, if you're going to do a straight stitch, you would want to do it so that it was perfectly like an eighth of an inch all the way around. And trying to get that perfect is really hard. So I avoid it. I avoid anything that makes me try to be perfect because it's just not going to happen. All right, so now I'm going to stitch all the way around it. If you are having trouble with the nap going over, so I'm going to use my little stiletto here and just kind of push this out of the way. But if this bothers you, you can always use um, water-soluble stabilizer and put it over the top, and it'll sort of hold it out of the way. And that's something you can get for embroidery. Why is that holding so tight? Hold on, I need to check my setting. Oh, that's why. What are we adjusting? The digital dual feed, the dual feed feed adjustment. It's holding onto it really tight, and I didn't want it to. Got see it. So that, it, is that, that's different than presser foot pressure? Well, because it is the presser foot, but the, this is the digital <laughs> dual feed, so it doesn't have a. That is the presser foot right now. Got it. Yeah, that's much better. So right if it's here. not beating through, you actually reduce the pressure. I reduce the pressure, pressure, yeah, the pressure um, on the foot because what it's doing is holding the fabric down, and because I have so many layers now, it really didn't want to move it, and I was like, that's not what I want. So I'm trying to keep it off the edge, just barely, and get it to stitch onto the fabric, the the white fabric. Sorry. Got it. So that that little blanket stitch, that the little long stitch pops over on right, the, so the, the actual the, applique fabric. Right, the straight stitches on the pinky fabric, the reddish fabric, and then the other. So you can see I did not pin it at all because brave, 
crazy, whichever way you want to. Basting spray, it's fine. Basting <laughs> spray, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a struggle getting that to move, and I don't, I don't know why. So a little zigzag will work really well for this too. So if you want to use like a little three, three um, zigzag or four, four zigzag, four wide, four long, that would totally work too. And you could just zigzag it down around. So we're just going to try to work our way around it. Were there any questions that were on there? So this little blanket stitch again, we're going to reiterate was a three width and a 1.8 millimeter length. Is that what I'm is, doing? Yes. Yeah. I think, it, I think you thought it was a two and maybe that's all right. One, one, one smaller, which is that's okay. It's working. It's so working. I like the way that it looks. I just have to keep it in a circle. The one thing with using the um, the stabilizer, which I wish I had it, but it was in my bag from when we did oh when we did embroidery last week. Um, the one thing that I have found is it kind of keeps that edge a little bit uh, easier to see. So if you're struggling seeing the edge. That's a, um, it's a great way to be able to kind of smooth it out so you can see it a little better. So I, want to get, I can see some of my pink is coming over. Um, the other thing that you could use with this would be the uh, open toe foot so you could see it a little bit better. If we were nicer, we would have done that today so they could see it. <laughs> we're not that nice, I guess. Dang it. It's right behind. I want to go through right there. Sorry, guys. There we go. I just kind of had to manhandle it a little. Just show it who's boss. That's right. I bought it. Make it go where I want it to. Okay. So I have to keep a little hand on that back side to try to get it to come around nicely. You know what I wish I had right now is one of those Supreme sliders like for quilting. You probably have no idea what that is. But. Nope. <laughs> it's like a little slidey part that goes on the bottom of your machine. And I think it's because I don't have much table space to kind of work with it. It's, it's wanting to hold on more than I want it to. Also, this position that I have to sew in is a pretty weird one, I have you, to say. You, you mean where the camera guy is where you really want to be? <laughs> right, or my yeah. foot's like stretched over to right. the right. I'm doing like a mid squat the entire time. My left leg is going to be real strong when this whole little, little tour is over. <laughs> okay. So if you are worried about your applique moving, feel free to pin it. Okay. I just like to live bravely and also just making this first sample. So it's not as uh, needing to be perfect. But if you're making this for uh, someone, you might want to make sure that it stays in place. It actually stayed just fine, but just saying. Okay. Almost three. I need another hand. You not, don't have any you don't have any extras to spare, do you? Not it. Sorry. Right. Fresh out. I will make it around here. You just have to kind of pull and guide at the same time to get it to be nice and flat. So that's an area where I'm like, oh, a pin would have been really helpful. You are definitely wrestling this more than I've seen you wrestle most things. Yeah, like I, it's just at a weird angle, today, and I'm not quite sure why it's why it's bugging me so much. But it just okay. doesn't want to well, doesn't want to do it the way I want it to. But it turned out fine. I was going to say the results seem yeah, they're fine. I just had to struggle a little bit, but it's definitely a circle, so that's good. I've I've made them before where they've ended up not quite circular, so that happens sometimes. But you could see like where I. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got the applique on. So basically, you've got it mostly complete. All we're going to do is I'm going to um, trim it up here, and then we're going to leave the binding for another time. That was really fast. Um, I'm going to spray this down. You can see this came up just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to use my paper. It's just because I'm trying to be a little bit judicious with my spray. So I'm going to respray this. So if that happens when you're working with it, just spray it and stick it back down. Totally fine. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this and show you how we do that. So technically, in the patterns, they'll always tell you what size they are. But I think this one is technically 29 by 42 inches. 
but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> so I need to get my ruler. Hold on. I had it over here. And by ruler, at this point, you basically just mean straight edge. Well, this one is actually a little ruler. Oh, okay. I forgot my big, big one in the uh, it's like We didn't care how, in the RV. how what size it was. Well, it's true. Okay, <laughs> that, yes. It's a straight, I mean, technically, it's a ruler, but really, it's just a straight edge. Okay. Yes. So what we want to do is I want to make sure. Got a little sloppy bit, and I want it to stay there. Okay, so really what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is even. So one of the things that I can do is I can take this 12 inches and I can mark this. So let's see if I do 12 and a half, it gets it right to that bottom edge, right? Okay, so let's see if I do 12 in, and I'm doing 12 and a half inches from this seam that I sewed. If I do that, I'm a little bit short right there. Okay, so I'm gonna back it up to 12 inches. I'm gonna draw a line. Okay, and I'm just using my Sharpie because I'm going to cut this off, so it's fine. Okay, so again, 12 inches because my bottom edge wasn't perfectly cut perfectly straight. Shocking. Shocking that I didn't cut it perfectly straight. <laughs> I'm going to get those out of my way. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. So it's important that these stay even. So that's one of the things is I want to make sure that the bottom is square and that this, that it's even. So if it's not, if it, this were like 12 inches on one end and 10 inches on the other, it looks terrible. Even if it's an inch off, it'll look bad. So you want to make sure that you are getting it um, fairly straight. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And I'm going to use my rotary for this. So like I was showing you earlier to use the blade, which works really well. But for this, I'm just going to use the rotary cutter and make a mess because it's through all these layers. And the mess is really the only difference. The mess is the biggest difference. Yeah, I mean, it'll cut it off nice and smooth, which the blade doesn't do. But I really like the way that the blade leaves the edge for the most part. See if I can chuck that. Mostly. Okay. There is actually, I believe, under there, a no vacuum here. Oh, a vacuum. You put the vacuum. I Look did. at you. You put the vacuum here for me. Oh. It fell apart, but it's OK. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. There we go. All right. Okay. So now, I'm going to go ahead and cut up the side. So on this side, the thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it's basically square at the bottom. So it's my 12 inches, and I want to make sure that it's coming up the side, and then I'm catching the back. I'm going to come over here just a little bit. Just look, make sure I'm catching it. If I don't, I can go back. I am going to do this. I'm going to bring it up onto the table a little bit more because the more weight it has coming off anywhere, the more off it's going to be. And the more I have to fix later, and I really don't want to. So I'll put this here. My band is now two inches. It was a three inch band when we started, but half inch seam allowance made it a two inch band. I'm just going to cut it off. And right about then, that's when you were taught earlier, you were mentioning that it didn't necessarily matter if you backstitched at the end of those seams, but right. it was just good to take it's good the habit. habit of it. It's a good but, habit. But here we are in this case. This is why off. it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Because you're just going to cut it right off. Got okay. it. So if I'd been really careful with my backing, this would match a little bit more, but this is pretty typical. You're going to cut a little bit off and that's totally fine. So don't even worry about that. All right, because what we want to do is just get this nice and straight. I'm just going to toss this over here. Okay. And then make a mess, and I'll vacuum at the end. Okay. <laughs> okay, and I just work my way around it. You can do whatever suits you. So this is one where um, I'm okay doing around all four sides and don't need to do end and end and side and side. But you might want to. I want another ruler. Hold on half a second. I thought I had another one over here. Oh, I just have a big stripology. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> Look at this. We're just going to like filch their rulers. <laughs> like, you don't mind if we steal your rulers, do you? But look what I can do here is I can do this where I can line it up my cut edge. That's what I wanted was a longer one so I can line up my cut edge with the top. Okay. 
And now I know that that corner is actually pretty square. So that when I come over here, I can actually make a square corner over here too. So thanks, blue bar. Thanks for having rulers just sitting around waiting for us. Put that over here. And one more twist around here, doing the other side. Okay, I'm gonna try not to move too much because it's a little messy. So this ends up being longer than my board. So you have to be a little fidgety. So if you have a bigger, uh, a bigger mat, that's great for this project. Make sure everything is flat. I'm gonna cut this off a little bit smaller because my batting is smaller. Okay. If you cut it off, because this is just obviously whacked off with scissors, if you cut it and it's within a half an inch here, you are fine, okay? Even the same thing with your selvage, if your selvage ends up being within a half an inch, you're fine, because that's how much our, uh, our seam allowance is gonna be, okay? So I just cut that off because I knew that top was square. That's why I could just cut it. So we should be able to do the same sort of thing here. Yep, where I'm gonna line up my seam. Okay. I can line this up. So let me show you a little trick. So I'm just using this really as a straight edge. I'm gonna get it lined up with my seam here. So my 15 is on the seam line that I did for the center. Okay. And bring this back so I'm going to get this straight get those to butt up I just think that was a little wider ruler it's only what a three inch ruler it's a little wee one okay because what I really want is to make sure that this is square at the bottom and still overlap here so at this point I can kind of move things around and make them work all right so don't be afraid to kind of manipulate the fabric Scoot it around, make it work for you. Okay, so now, if I measure it even close to right, yeah, that should come off as a square. Great. All right, so now I've got the whole thing squared up. At this point, you can go around and you can zigzag the edge, well, vacuum it first. Then you can zigzag this whole edge and put the binding on. Okay, so the binding is a whole other thing, and we have a video, a great video about that one called um, Minky Binding Basics or Binding Basics with Minky Fabric. <laughs> Jackie, what was it called? She just got the name for me. Um, and you can find that on Shannon, Shannon's, um, Shannon Fabric's YouTube. There's also going to be a link in the comments. We'll also link it in the description of the video too so that you can go ahead and bind it. Yes. What did questions? the finished measurement Actually, what is it end actually? Up being just for funsies. Let's try. It doesn't necessarily matter. Obviously, we're not going to, it's probably not going to be we're exactly gonna see. like what was in the pattern, but just for fun, let's, let's see how we did. Let's see how you did, see how five, we did. Five, five, five weeks ago when you, when you were cutting. <laughs> how carefully I actually measured things. Everything. Yeah, very carefully. Uh, let's see. We've got width, we've got, oh, 27. So 27 wide. And it's a little bit longer than the 36 inches. So let's see what that is. So we'll measure from zero over two here. We stick a pin in at 36, move it to 24. So a 44, so 27 by 40. No. By 40. By 40, 27 yeah. by 40. Yeah, 27 by 40. 27 by 40. So I think the pattern says 29 by 42, but you can see I lop off a lot. I don't try to get the very most out of everything that I possibly can. Did you find it, Jackie? Do we know what it was called? Oh, which one? The binding. Do you remember what I called it? Um, yes. <laughs> I think it's basic binding. Basic binding techniques yeah. for cuddle minky there we, fabric. There we go. Say basic binding either. techniques for cuddle, cuddle minky lush fabrics. <laughs> so it's a big long That's name. So if you look up words. basic binding techniques, cuddle, you will find it. So we have two videos for doing the binding is what it is. And we did one. So ba the basic binding one is the one that we did last October, maybe. And it's a newer one. And I talk about all sorts of different bindings. So different fabrics that I like, different ways of doing it, using a serpentine, using a zigzag, because it actually is a whole process that is really good to learn how to do that. 
So you could do it really super simple and easy, and I can tell you, you kind of strip one and three quarters, you sew it to one side, bring it around to the other side, zigzag it in place, but there's actually a lot more to it. So I would suggest that if you're gonna do the kit, that you go and watch the video on how to bind it, so you can make choices on how you bind it and have it the way that you like it best. Okay, so you can see the different ways that I've done it with both a cuddle three and several different lux cuddles with zigzags or between all sorts of stuff. So that's how you're gonna to put together a lullaby. It's how you can put together any of the strip quilts. So basically you're gonna pin it in place, stitch it, flip it over, baste it in place and do the next strip. And you're just gonna keep building that. So you can do that with any size quilt, whether it's this one, it's a baby size, the wee one, which is even smaller, 27 inch square, or the big ones that we have that are um, the kits that are 58 by 70, I believe. So any of those work in the exact same manner. So just learning how to put them together is super helpful. And then you can make any little quilt. So I will, uh, I will bind this and put it in this dash box, I guess. So I will do that later. Um, we will be back next week. So this weekend we are at uh, Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. And we are doing a bunch of those classes via Zoom. So if you're interested, you can sign up for those. We'll be doing an infinity scarf and a luxe throw there. So that one is available to anyone watching because it's via Zoom class. And then um, next week, we will be in Hawk's home state. We're going to be in Ohio. So we're very excited. We are going to Quilt Beginnings in Dublin, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. And we will be there next Tuesday making the hooded towel, which is an adorable little project for um, baby. And it's super cute. So we're going to use terry cloth and cuddle and make a little, um, a little hooded towel that is the perfect little baby shower gift. So uh, we'll be back then. Is there anything else I needed to tell people? Yeah, let's talk about who won. Oh, winning, right, somebody <laughs> wins every time and I forget, sorry, I get like so distracted. I totally didn't <clears throat> change over. To get today's winner goes to Michelle P. You are the lucky winner, you will get a kit. So make sure that you reach out to us via Facebook Messenger or email, you can reach us, send us your mailing address, phone number, all that good stuff. And we will get a kit out to you, probably a little by kit because that's what we need today, if that makes sense. Um, and then we'll have a giveaway here as well. So um, that, make sure that you subscribe to YouTube uh, channel if you want to get notifications of when we go live. We do it every Tuesday, so that's been super fun. If you have not joined our I Love Cuddle group on Facebook, I strongly suggest that you do it. I love that group. We have a huge group of people in there who are all cuddle fanatics who are making all sorts of things that are super inspiring and very supportive group of people. So make sure you join us. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, all of that good stuff. And uh, we'll be hitting the road tomorrow, right? After some more classes. So yes. Fun stuff. And then, like I said, Indiana, Ohio, we're coming for you. All right? Okay. Until next time, happy sewing. Yeah.